Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Shadowgate for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, so we're back in the banquet hall. We've already gone through one of the doors. And let's go through another one. This time we're going to use key number six on this upper door here. And we're going to move through there. Although the evening air is cool, the small circular room radiates a fervent heat. Well, that's weird. Let's go ahead and take this horn on the ground. Oh gosh, what's going on? A large fireball suddenly appears in the room and causes you to shield your eyes. When you open them, you notice that the fire has changed into something far more menacing. Okay, so now we've got a, a hellhound. And we need to get rid of them. So since it's a hellhound... Let's see, and since it's like fire and stuff. Uh, where are you? Where is it? There it is. Let's use some water on it. The holy water has sent the hellhound back to the place where it was spawned. Get out of here, you beast. The flame died out. The room is quiet as though nothing had happened. Now we can take the horn. And it's in hand. Okay, so now let's move up the ladder on the left if you saw that. Oh gosh, now there's another monster waiting for us. As you stand on the turret, an eerie blue dragon appears in the clear starry sky. So what we want to do is we want to come here and use the star, believe it or not, on the wyvern. The star becomes a flash of light as you launch it. Crash! It strikes the wyvern, and it explodes into a million pieces! And they totally took the time to count each and every one of them, too, just to make sure there were a million of them. But now that the wyvern's gone, we can take this talisman. And we're done here, so we can move back to the banquet hall. And there's one door left. So let's use key number four on the bottom door. You can't seem to find a key. Okay. What? What are you doing? There we go. Okay. See, sometimes you think the cursor is on the thing you're trying to click and it's not. So, just be careful. Try and line it up as best you can. Okay. So, let's go through the remaining door. We've got two torches. Which, of course, we're going to take. And we should probably use one. Because our... One of our torches is going down a little bit. The torch is lit. You can wait till they go out if you want. Or at least, you can wait till one of them goes out. And then relight that one. But, uh, I've... I've waited too long before and have died from doing that, so I like to just, you know, do things safe. So now that we've got the uh, torches, we can move through the left. From this windy ledge, you can get an idea of the size and strength of the castle. So we've got lightning going on. Might be a good idea to put a lightning rod out. We just happen to have a rod, and there just so happens to be a place to put it. Suddenly, the sky seems to be on fire as a bolt of pure lightning strikes the rod. You are startled to see a skeletal hand rise from a hole that has formed at your feet. And it's handing us something, so let's take it. Wouldn't want to be rude. The wand is in hand. As you take the wand from the skeletal hand, it begins to descend. The hole then closes up as if it had never been. And now we're done here, so let's move to the left. Lightning lights up the countryside as you stand on a lookout point. What we want to do is we want to open bag number three, and looking inside we find a big coin and three gold coins. We'll take those. Thank you for your generosity, bag. I appreciate it. All right, now we're done here. So let's move back. And move back again. It's a passageway with two arches. 
So let's move this way. You're in a small throne room. A skeleton wearing a gold crown sits in uh, sits on a throne in front of you. Okay. Um. Wait. I don't think this is where. No, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm a little ahead of myself. We'll be there in a second. What we want to do is we want to move back, way back, all the way back. Back some more. Back some more. Um, let's see. Back some more. To the tri-door hallway. Um, to the corridor. Then a the hidden passage. And then the bridge room. Okay, so this is where we want to be. So, you remember, of course you remember the two bridges, and this one we, we're not going to be able to cross. Well, if we use bottle number two on ourselves, um, you drink the liquid and immediately begin to rise in the air. And so now we're lighter than air, we can use this torch to <laughs> relight the one that's going down. And now we can move across the rickety bridge. A giant snake confronts you in the small cave. Alright. So what we want to do is we want to find the wand. Let's see. Where are you? Find the wand and use it on the snake. The snake begins to shake and shudder. Is it just your eyes or is it shrinking? Oh yeah, it's definitely shrinking. And it went on fire and turned into a staff. The serpentine statue begins to change. It grows smaller and smaller. It dematerializes and forms anew as a staff of tremendous beauty. Well, of course we're going to take that. The staff is in hand. Okay. So now that we have the staff, we can move back through the castle. Back. Back. We're going to go to the right. We're going to go forward, to the left, to the mirror, we'll get to the hot room, move over there, oh, oh gosh, the troll says you must pay a toll of one gold coin, and now he's got this, the spear that we used on him, and he's not happy, um, so, we, c I, I think we could give him a gold coin, but, I'm not going to do that. I want all the coins that I can carry. So let's go to our... Sp we got to have a spell that can work on, on something. Let's try Humana. The spell was chanted. As soon as the magic is invoked, you lose sight of yourself. You're as invisible as the wind. And we moved by safely. Alright. So we got through that pretty easily. Let's go ahead and move back to that... Um, throne room. It's the royal throne room. Okay. So now we've got a, got all the items we need in order to um, move forward. First of all, let's place the scepter in the statue in the skeleton's hand. Since it's the king and we should do that. You can now see a ring shaped hole. I totally didn't read what that said, but that's okay. It's probably not important. <laughs> now we need to find the ring. There it is. Use the ring on this ring-shaped hole. The ring fits perfectly. The throne magically rises, revealing a secret passageway. Well, we've got a secret passageway, so might as well go down it. Okay. So first, this hallway is made of large granite slabs. We're going to take all four of these torches. And we'll probably use one. Come on, line up. There we go. Yes, I'm going to use one just to be safe. The torch is lit. Okay, so... Now we want to move through this exit at the end. Don't go through the left one. 
because I'm pretty sure that's a death trap. On the opposite wall are a pair of stone beasts guarding a dark archway. Okay, so we want to skip that for now. We want to move to this door on the right. Sulfurous fumes rise from the hot molten lava some 30 feet below you. Swimming would not be wise. You think? Alright, so in here, we want to use the Motari spell. The spell was chanted Motari. The statue lowers and a large platform rises out of the lava. You now have a way across. Alright, so let's move over there. Stalagmites surround this room like the cavernous jaws of a huge beast. Now you see those three levers? We're going to have to use them in a specific order. Now, the solution to this puzzle is shown in the Sphinx room, but I'm just going to give it to you right now. So what we want to do is we want to use the right lever. The right handle was lowered. Then we want to use the middle one. The middle handle was lowered. And then we want to use the right one again. The right handle was raised. Woohoo! Scree! The cylinder lifts with a shuddering sound. You're momentarily dazzled as the darkness is lit by a blinding flash. The silver orb is revealed! Better take it. The orb is in hand. As soon as you remove the orb, the cylinder closes. Good thing we didn't take our time with that, isn't it? Would hate to have uh, lost my hand there. Okay, so now we're going to go back to where the gargoyles were. Don't try and move in here. It's a, it's a hole. It's a hole that will lead to your death. Alright. You're in a dark and gloomy cavern. So now what we want to do is we want to get by these um, gargoyles. And the best way to do that is to use Illumina to blind them. Suddenly, the cavern is so bright that you have to shade your eyes. It takes you a few moments to regain your senses from the Nova Burst. It seems the gargoyles were also affected and haven't yet recovered from the spell. So let's not dawdle. Let's get through there. The room seems to be made solely for the purpose of housing the well. Okay, so we got a well. What we want to do is um, open the well. The cover of well is open. Great. <laughs> not, not great grammar, but great that we got it open. Now, what do we do when we have a well? Oops, wrong way. We toss a coin in there. Might as well go for the big one. As soon as you throw the coin into the well, a huge wind erupts from within it. It reminds you of the small dust devils you see in the autumn months. Alright, so... Let's see. Now we... will move into the well. The swirling winds carry you down the deep well and set you gently into the cavern below. You stand above a beach, looking down upon a river. Well, there's a gong there. We've got this beater, too. What do you want to use it on? After the gong sounds, a specter materializes right before your eyes. The ghostly ferryman doesn't look friendly. You hear a faint voice ask for a fare. So, we're going to need to pay our way for this, so let's use our gold coin. The ferryman takes the coin and gestures you to board quickly. Okay, so... Let's see. We're going to move on to this raft. You have to actually click the raft to move on to it. You climb aboard the tiny raft and soon reach the opposite bank. A stone skull stands against the far wall, screaming silently. For some reason, you get the feeling you are standing on sacred ground. Okay, so this is it. This is pretty much the end. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use this talisman. There's three slots where it can go in. There's like a gem here and a crown and a sword. Remember... The scroll before said um, something about the bladed sun. Well, that's what it was talking about. Um, you So you want to put the talisman under the sword. The artifact known as the bladed sun is now secured and in place. Okay. So now, at this point, 
Remember, it also said we needed to use a horn. Let's use that horn. The sound of the horn echoes loudly in your ears. Suddenly, you hear the sound of grinding rock. The jaw of the skull begins to descend. Hot wind erupts from the mouth, creating the illusion that the stone skull is alive. Alright, here we go. The last room. The cavern that you have entered is by far the largest your eyes have ever gazed upon. And there's our warlock lord. Oh gosh, what's going on? Oh no! He succeeded! We weren't in time. From the depths rises the most powerful creature that has ever existed, the behemoth. Your stomach knots up as you stare at this new horror. The beast is indeed incredible. You wonder for a moment how you can defeat such a creature as this. Well, we've got what we need. And what we need to do is we're going to need to use the blade. Let's see, where is it? We're going the wrong way. Use the blade on the staff. Suddenly, lightning begins to flash in the room. Then the golden spike slides smoothly onto the staff and locks into place. Now I'm going to use uh, a torch. Okay. Now at this point, we've combined the blade and the staff, but remember, we need three items to combine. So we're going to use the orb on the staff this time. Light cascades through the room as the staff becomes a living entity. And now we have the Staff of Ages. Okay? So we've completed the Staff of Ages. So let's use it. We have a choice. We could use it on the Warlock Lord. And it might seem like the right call. But what you really want to do is use it on the Behemoth. You pray as you raise the Staff of Ages that it has the power that the Prophets claimed. The Staff pulsates with power and a beam of light explodes from it, striking the Behemoth. Oh, he's not happy. I don't like this. I'm going to grab the Warlock Lord and go back to my hidey hole. At least he has a buddy now. The creature screams in agony, thrashing back and forth in great pain. In his rage, he grabs the Warlock Lord and descends into the depths forever. Forever? Huh. You can hear the Warlock Lord's screams fade into silence. Suddenly, it is very quiet. A beautiful light seems to fill the cavern. The morning sun, you say to yourself. It is over. Although exhausted, you lean on the Staff of Ages and begin your long journey home. Word of your historic quest has already reached the farthest parts of the land. How? How did they find out about it? And how did it manage to travel all that way so quickly? I don't even understand. It's not like they have internet. It's not like they have telegrams even. Whatever. You are triumphantly greeted as you enter the gates of the royal city of Stormhaven. Moments later, you are ushered into the royal palace where you are greeted by the king. I know what thou hast done, brave one. The world would be dark forever without thee. And this always kind of freezes up at this moment. But uh, it's not over. It's not done. We'll just wait for it to move on. There we go. You are bestowed a kingdom to rule and the king's fair daughter's hand. As you leave the throne room, you know that although this quest is over, others await. After all, the bards will need new legends to sing of and new tales to tell. The first story's end. Now this is actually the end of the game. And so, that's it for uh, Shadowgate. It's actually a pretty fun game. Um, part of the fun is just going through and, and making mistakes and, and, and figuring out what's going to keep you alive and what's just going to kill you. And there are plenty of ways for you to die in this game. So, uh, just because I, I didn't show any of them doesn't mean that they aren't there. But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good point-and-click adventure if you're into those. I, I do enjoy them sometimes. Um, pretty short, but, you know, it's a Nintendo game. They weren't 
most of them weren't all that long. Um, but definitely, definitely fun. Definitely a good game. So, you know, check it out if you can. Anyway, this has been Let's Play Shadowgate, and I will see you for the next LP.